A naval fleet cannot achieve command of the sea with just the biggest or most deadliest warships in the water these days. Modern naval warfare is a three-dimensional chessboard involving land, air and water. 21st century warships must be able to fight in as many of those dimensions as possible in order to be victorious. Imagine for a moment an 8,000-ton fully loaded frigate that does not have anti-air missiles or anti-submarine weaponry. It would be a sitting duck against all aerial and underwater strikes. So operational versatility and mission adaptability are the two key concepts that every warship of our era needs to comply with. The warship that is on its way to becoming one of the most popular warships in its class is the Type 26 frigate by BAE Systems. This vessel, created by the UK Ministry of Defence to partially replace the Navy's 13 Type 23 frigates and follow the so-called Global Combat Ship Modern Design, its primary role is to conduct advanced anti-submarine warfare missions while supporting air defence and general purpose operations. Because of its modularity and flexibility, the Type 26 will be able to participate in a full range of operations, including maritime security, counter-piracy, counter-terrorist, and humanitarian and disaster relief operations. At the moment of this video, there are 32 BAE Systems Type 26 warships planned globally, 8 by the UK Royal Navy, 9 by the Royal Australian Navy, and 15 by the Royal Canadian Navy. The first vessels are expected to start being operational in the mid-2020s. The cost per vessel is estimated at approximately $1 billion, but the actual cost is subject to the ordered quantity and vessel configurations. As expected, a larger quantity means a lower cost per vessel. In terms of specifications, it'll have a maximum speed of 26 knots, 30 miles per hour, a length of 492 feet with a beam of 68 feet a displacement of around 7,000 tons and a range of over 8,000 miles. A crew of just over 150 sailors can operate the frigate while the vessel's maximum capacity is 208. In terms of propulsion, the Global Combat Ship will use one Rolls-Royce MT-30 gas turbine as direct drive and four MTU-type 20V 4000 M53B high-speed diesel generators driving two electric motors in a combined diesel-electric or gas configuration. When it comes to armament, the United Kingdom Royal Navy's variant of the Type 26 design will be equipped with the Type 997 Artisan 3D search radar and Sea Sector CAM air defense missiles launched via 48 vertical launching system canisters, an additional 24-cell Mark 41 strike-length vertical launch system cells are positioned forward of the bridge and are capable of firing a great variety of missiles such as the Tomahawk land attack cruise missile, anti-submarine rockets, a future anti-ship missile, or quad-packed sea scepter missiles. The Type 26 will also be fitted with guns of various calibers, such as the NATO standard BAE 5-inch 62 caliber Mark 45 naval gun, two Phalanx close-in weapon systems, CIWS, two 30mm DS-30M Mark II automated small caliber guns, two miniguns, and four general purpose machine guns. The BAE Systems Type 26 is such a desirable warship that the Royal Australian Navy decided to base their future Hunter-class frigate on it. The construction of the planned nine vessels will start in 2020 and they're expected to enter service in the late 2020s, replacing the previous 10 frigate Anzac-class which have been in service since 1996. The ships will be built by BAE Systems Australia at Osborne Naval Shipyard. The specifications of this warship will be similar to that of the United Kingdom's Royal Navy. However, it's expected to fire RIM-66 Standard II and RIM-162 ESSM missiles from its Mark 41 VLS. The Australian vessel will also be able to carry one MH-60R anti-submarine warfare helicopter and has the ability to host other Australian aircraft, such as the MRH-90 helicopter. A deadly and dangerous warship that we cannot possibly ignore is China's new destroyer, the Type 55. This vessel's main role is the area air defense and is expected to undertake expeditionary missions and form the primary escort for the Chinese aircraft carriers. The Type 55 adopts a conventional flared hull with distinctive stealthy features with reduced radar, noise, infrared and electromagnetic radiation signatures. 
The first ship of this class was commissioned on the 12th of January 2020, while a total of eight vessels are planned to be constructed. According to projections, the Type 55 destroyer has a full displacement of 13,000 tons, a length of 590 feet, and a beam of 65 feet. It can reach a maximum speed of 30 knots, 34 and a half miles an hour, and has a range of 5,800 miles, with a complement of 300 plus crew members. The United States classifies these ships as cruisers, and according to experts, the Type 55 is expected to fulfill a similar role as a Ticonderoga class cruiser. The unit cost per ship, including tests and armaments, is estimated at $850 million. The Type 55 carries some seriously heavy armament and is equipped with 112 universal vertical launch cells, 64 cells forward and 84 cells aft, and carries HHQ-9 surface-to-air missiles, YJ-18 anti-ship cruise missiles, CJ-10 land attack cruise missiles, and missile-launched anti-submarine torpedoes. Potentially, the larger cells may also carry anti-ship ballistic missiles. It'll also be able to carry two Chang Z-18F ASW helicopters. Type 55's future variants may be armed with lasers or electromagnetic railguns, a truly devastating destroyer that we will see more of in the future. Another truly remarkable operational versatile warship is the German MKS-180 multipurpose combat ship. This so-called all-rounder is a multi-mission platform vessel which will be able to patrol large areas anywhere around the world, to enforce embargoes and, if needed, to evacuate German citizens during crisis situations. As expected, it should also be capable of high-intensity naval combat against surface and submarine vessels. Until now, there is no other single class of ship that can conduct such a wide range of missions. The MKS-180 will be 509 feet long, and will have a displacement of 10,000 tons. It'll be operated by a crew of 110 and can also carry 70 passengers. In terms of operating endurance, the vessel is expected to be ready to be deployed at sea for up to 24 months with a crew rotation every four months and will have an estimated service life of 30 years. MKS-180's armament includes medium and short-range surface-to-air missiles, long-range anti-ship missiles, a 127mm main gun with extended range ammunition, water cannons, heavy machine guns, and light guns. Based on the mission module, the warship can also carry utility boats, reconnaissance drones, and ASW helicopters. The basic version of the MKS-180 is a fully-fledged combat ship, but depending on the equipped mission module, it can specialize on a specific role. As an example, the anti-submarine warfare module turns the MKS-180 into a dedicated submarine hunter. The ship can secure a large area against a submarine threat with its onboard helicopters and their own sonars, in cooperation with the sensors of Allied Maritime Patrol aircraft and submarines. With the custody mission module, the MKS-180 turns into a floating base for anti-piracy missions. Multiple cell rooms allow persons to be temporarily detained, and an additional sanitary station makes medical examinations possible under quarantine conditions. In addition to these two, there are plans for a mission module specializing in mine warfare, which will include a diving chamber and other special equipment. What is impressive about the MKS-180, though, is that its unused mission modules can be stored, purchased, and maintained independently of the ship. And in case of changes in operating conditions and advances in technology, only the module may need to be modernized. The MKS-180 is a truly versatile warship that will be able to participate in a great variety of missions. If we move a bit to the west, France is also developing a highly versatile and quite futuristic looking warship, the Sea Sword 90. This stealth corvette is designed and developed by the Constructions Mécanique de Normandie in collaboration with Thierry Verharen Architect Naval and was presented for the first time at Paris in October 2014. The Seasword 90 is expected to be a compact and innovative vessel that combines high firepower with a fantastic radar and it could be used for anti-surface, anti-aircraft and anti-submarine operations. The vessel features a stealthy hull and a superstructure design with sloped surfaces, making it ideal to operate in numerous environments and assume various roles. The Sea Sword 90 Corvette can be deployed in deterrent missions, coastal and offshore defense, anti-submarine warfare, anti-surface warfare, and anti-air warfare missions. It can reach a maximum speed of 28 knots, 32 miles an hour, 
while it has a range of 8,000 miles. The Sea Sword 90 has a length of 311 feet and a beam of 52 feet. The vessel can accommodate 65 crew members and can be fitted with 20 additional berths. The Corvette, although compact, has very powerful armament, enabling it to deal with any kind of enemy, including submerged threats. It'll be equipped with one 76 or 57 mm gun mounted at the forward bow deck and two remotely controlled 20 or 30 mm guns placed on port and starboard side. The vessel can also be equipped with eight MM40 Exocet anti-ship missiles and 16 vertically launched anti-air missiles. The two short-range air defense missiles on the deck will further enhance the protection against aerial threats while the two triple-tube torpedo launchers will allow the vessel to strike enemy submarines. The modularity of the Sea Sword 90 Corvette enables the operation of submarine drones and teleoperated surface device or 11 meter long RHIB for the landing and intervention of commandos. The Sea Sword 90 Corvette can also be equipped with an aft platform capable of accommodating a 10 ton class helicopter. The vessel will be fitted with a decoy launching system for deceiving incoming anti ship missiles and torpedoes. It will also integrate a hull mounted sonar and a towed sonar for conducting anti submarine warfare operations. France's versatile Corvette might be compact in size, but it's definitely very dangerous. A compact and stealthy compact rival to the France's Sea Sword 90 is the Caracurt class Corvette, which is intended to be a more seaworthy, blue water complement to the Bayan M class Corvettes. The Russian guided missile Corvette has a displacement of 880 tons, a length of 220 feet, and a beam of 36 feet. Its maximum speed is 30 knots, 34 and a half miles an hour, and its range is 2,900 miles. At the moment of this video, there are two active warships, while seven more are completed. A total of 18 Karakur-class warships are planned to be constructed in total. The main armament of the Karakur-class will include several land attack 3M14T caliber NK cruise missiles fired from an 8-tube UKSK vertical launching system. It'll also be armed with the Pansir M missile and anti-aircraft gun system and an AK-176MA 76.2mm automatic gun located on the forward bow deck, which can fire at a rate of 150 rounds per minute and can engage targets within the maximum range of 9.5 miles. The armament of the Corvette also includes two AK-630M 30mm close-in weapon systems that are used to destroy aerial and surface targets such as anti-ship missiles, aircraft and helicopters, as well as small-size surface vessels, floating mines and shore-based fireposts. Last but not least, a launch pad for an Orland 10 UAV is also included in the Karakur class's design. We should also not forget the Swedish mine countermeasure vessel Saab MCMV-80. This next generation ship will have superior operational flexibility and is expected to replace the Swedish Navy's Costa-class MCM vessel in the next 10 years. The Saab MCMV-80 has a length of 262 feet, a displacement of 1,250 tons, and will be able to reach 15 knots, 17 miles per hour, with a crew capacity of 40 to 60 sailors. What makes this vessel truly special is its adaptability. The MCMV-80 can be tailored to operate in a wide range of different missions, both in the minefield as a traditional mine countermeasure vessel and outside the minefield as a mothership for remotely operated or autonomous mine warfare systems. On the basic MCMV-80 design, a helicopter flight deck and UAV hangar can be added for logistic and reconnaissance operations. Two stern ramps and a launching crane enables the launch of unmanned surface vehicles, autonomous underwater vehicles such as the AUV-62, remotely operated vehicles such as the multi-shot mine neutralization system, and RHIBs or interceptors. The design is so adaptable that it can fit the role of a fully-fledged offshore patrol vessel. So, now that you've seen some of the most versatile and deadly future warships in the world, which one do you think is the best? Let us know. And if you enjoyed the video, give us a like, share, and subscribe to be the first to know when a new video arrives. Thanks for watching.